Hi! In this video I will demonstrate how to build a fully configurable model which parameters are driven by the input values, formulas and external databases. I will also show how to create a custom user interface for the input page. And all this will be achieved without any programming or any third-party add-ins usage. The sample model used in this video is a parametric window. The purpose of the tutorial is to show the techniques of model parameterization, but not the specific window design. I started my model with a simple layout sketch, then I inserted the structural member feature. I'm using this profile for my window frame. Then I inserted some sketch to dry multiply frames, and here is the development. You see the uh, profile is very similar to previous one. Uh, then I'm using the trim to just trim my uh, developments. Then I'm going to create a, a frame pattern and also the another uh, extrusion which is going to be my glass here and also the pattern of glasses. You can see that I'm using SOLIDWORKS equations to add dependency between dimensions in this model. I also have uh, several configuration specific custom properties in this model to drive uh, properties like color, price and profile size. Now let's insert the design table and just select the required parameters from this list over here. The parameters now appeared in my table. I just want to repeat the same process to select the missing parameters like a custom properties and a color property. I have MySQL database installed on this machine which contains some Windows design related tables. I have a table for profiles, prices and colors. Now I need to set up a data source to connect to my database. In this demonstration I will be using ODBC data source. I simply type in the ODBC in the search box of control panel to find the required tool. Click Add. Select one of the ODBC drivers set up on this machine. In this demo I will be using Unicode driver. Finish. Specify a name some optional description and my connection data the server if it's a local host you can just leave it empty username password and if it's correct you can pick up a database and just test your connection let's edit the design table and link it to the external databases I need to switch firstly to the data tab then select a from sources and from data connection wizard. Now I can select the ODBC DSN and select the connection I have created in previous steps and you can see the database is here. I'm just pointing where I want to my database to be output and just repeat the process for the rest of the tables in this database. Let's open the design table to make sure that my data is not cleared. You can see I have a security notice in regards of my connection. Uh, in order to permanently disable it, I can just go to Settings, Trust Centers, More Settings, and just enable all data connections in my external content. So I don't have this message anymore. Finally, I want to add an attribute to the data so it's automatically updated every time Excel spreadsheet is opened. This ensures that your data is always up to date with your database. Now let's implement the calculation logic in my design table. I will be utilizing all the Excel formula power to drive my parameters. The width of the profile is extracted from the database and it depends on the profile size selected by the user. I'm going to use the VLOOKUP function of Excel. I need to specify the lookup value, lookup range, column index to return the value from. 
and in this case it should be a second column and also whether I want the exact match or just an approximate match. If I change my profile size you can see uh, my width value is updated according to the table. Let's repeat the same for glass thickness parameter. The formula is very similar with the only difference that the result value needs to be returned from the third column rather than second and the value range is also should cover the third column. Distance between sections equals to the total width divided by quantity of the sections. The number of pattern instances equals to a total number of frames minus 1. I need to set up an if statement in this formula to ensure that the frame cannot be 0 if a 1 section frame is set up. Salvers will not accept the 0 value for instances pattern count and will generate the rebuild error. This parameter is not required so I will just delete it. When setting up the width of the glass, I need to consider the fact that every glass should be a different solid body. For this purpose, I set up the width of the glass to be equal to a total width if a single frame section is used. Otherwise, it should be equal to the width of the section. Now let's set up the color. I simply need to look up for a color code by the color name. The total price is the price of the glass and the price of the frame and is calculated by the formula you can see on your screen. You can see that the price is updated if I change the value of the profile size. Because in this model one, two or three frames may be specified, some of the features like the patterns may become redundant. Let's now specify this in our design table. I will be using simple Excel if statement to set the state variable of design table to U or S to unsuppress or suppress a feature correspondingly. I will repeat similar steps for another features to set the state variables according to the table you can see on your screen. Several steps to verify that my formula is evaluated correctly. Finally, I will specify the dynamic name for my configuration to use some placeholders like a width, height and a number of frames. As you can see now, the name of the configuration is evaluated according to the data in the row of the design table. Let's make some changes in my design table and see how it affects my model. Now I can modify input parameters in my design table to regenerate the model. And as a result I have a model with two frames. As a last step I want to make input of parameters a bit more user friendly. And I am going to use the SolidWorks configuration publisher for this purpose. I can simply drag a control, specify a label and the design table variable which corresponds to this control. For the drop-down control, I can bind the list of values to a range from the design table. Please refer the SolidWorks help for more information about the configuration publisher. Let's now mount the windows into the walls. Now, when I place in the component into the assembly, the property manager page is shown where I can specify my input parameters. Once I click green tick, SolidWorks will generate a new configuration and set it to the component. Let me just quickly make a window into the wall. Let's repeat the same process for windows insertion and mounting them to other walls. Please note that SolidWorks will generate new configuration for every instance of the component I'm inserting and will not modify the original configuration.
You can even reconfigure the parameters of the component after it has been inserted. Finally, let's insert the bill of materials table and add the price column. Thank you for watching this video.